As NFL free agency inches closer, the Broncos have several interesting decisions to make on players' contracts, whether it's moving on or simply converting things into a signing bonus. We'll break down every option here on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. The Broncos have several interesting decisions they'll have to make in the coming days and weeks ahead as they get ready for NFL free agency so they can become cap compliant. Welcome to a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country. Special shout out to all the everydayers out there who tune in and make us your first listen of the day every single day, every single day, all year long, to be honest with you. We have you covered with what's going on with every angle of your favorite team. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, site expert of their predominantlyorange.com. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Sarah, we're at a very interesting juncture here for Broncos country because there's some important events coming up. Obviously, in the next week, the NFL scouted combine. That's going to draw a lot of conversation, a lot of attention. NFL free agency, the NFL draft. But before Denver could get into the weeds of all of that, they're going to have to figure out how to deal with the being $24 million over the salary cap at this point, which leads us to our conversation here today. The Broncos have some interesting contract options and decisions to make in the coming days and weeks ahead. Yeah, really. And it starts with Russell Wilson and his contract, right? Which is kind of the albatross on the Broncos roster. And it's the hugest piece of the salary cap pie. And it's going to impact every other position on this roster, which means that like maybe guys who were in the plans previously with Russell Wilson in the future plans as well could now be phased out of the team's current plans. And I think, Cody, we start with Russell Wilson's contract. Look, For anybody who's listening who may not understand or know, the Broncos, as of what we know to be the possibilities, I mean, I'm sure there's other things that they can do, but what we know to be the possibilities, a cut, even if a trade is somehow facilitated, the Broncos really can't save any cap space by getting rid of Russell Wilson. The best that they could do is potentially work out a deal to where they pay a portion of Russ's deal. Maybe another team is willing to pay a portion, but At the end of the day, Cody, we know the Broncos are on the hook for $39 million this season for Russell Wilson, whether he plays for the Broncos, whether he plays for the Raiders, the Falcons, the Steelers, it doesn't matter. The Broncos are on the hook for $39 million. The question right now is whether or not they're going to be on the hook for $37 million cash (laughs) in 2025, which as you stated, it's the beginning of the new league year, which is mid-March. So when we say March Madness, look, We don't talk about college basketball on this podcast. The the NFL has enough madness for March, and the Denver Broncos are going to be at the center of it all, Russell Wilson in particular. But no cap savings there. So as you talk about the Broncos needing to basically maneuver $25 million just to get break even on the salary cap, it doesn't appear as though Russ is going to be able to help with that. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what Denver decides to do. And I think our uh, spot track, I think, did a really good job. There was an article that went out. They really kind of outlined the whole contract situation. I retweeted it on my Twitter feed if anyone wants to go check it out. And look, if you're trying to figure out what the heck is spot track, like Broncos country, if you want to figure out what the Broncos financial situation looks like, you want to see what every player contract looks like. Spot track is a great resource and tool for you to use. That's what we reference so much. We also do over the cap from time to time. Just some things that we keep our eye on here. And obviously, kind of the last cherry here on the Russell Wilson thing is that I think it's interesting to to make note that obviously it got published in uh, local media and obviously some journals, sports business journals here, that Russ and Sierra, they are taking offers on their Cherry Hills mansion at this point. So if that's a sign of anything, I think you could read into it and say, all right, well, if they're taking offers on it, more than likely they already know they're not going to be back here in 2024 with the Broncos. So a lot of interesting things. We know that official decision will be coming up here probably before March 17th, March 18th. We'll have more clarity, but there's a lot of things that are going to go on between now and then when that does happen, when the big news happens on the decision, we'll break it down here on Lockdown Broncos. That leads us into our next player here. And obviously this is a player who doesn't believe himself that maybe he'll be back with the Broncos in 2024. That is Garrett Bowles. He has come out. He has said he wants to be a Bronco for life. 
He said that obviously at the NFL honors went during the Super Bowl week. He told that to our good friend Mike Kliss of Nine News. His cap hit for 2024 is $20 million. He is the third most expensive contract right now on the roster. So there's the Russell Wilson contract, Mike McGlinchey, Garrett Bowles. Like we'll dive deeper to that. But Garrett Bowles is a guy that obviously there's going to be a discussion about whether or not he's going to be back when you factor in Denver being 24 million over the cap, a 20 million cap hit. When you look at the dead cap, if you move on from him, it's much easier to maybe kind of cut the gap a little bit, but then it leaves the Broncos in a hole from a roster standpoint at the tackle position. And that right there is a huge, huge question mark for me, Sarah. On what are the Broncos going to do here? Yeah, it creates a, a big gap. I mean, you would then be talking about needs at quarterback and left tackle. I mean, maybe Ooh. the two most important positions on the entire roster. So we, we know the, the huge gap with like expectations from fans who want to just reload the roster and Broncos fans who want to compete right now and like the ownership group and Sean Payton, like what did they sign up for? We know Greg Penner said they expect to be better than eight wins next year. So we're talking about letting go of your starting QB, your starting left tackle. I think Garrett Bowles has some trade value, Cody. So I don't think if the Broncos are looking to offload that contract, I think maybe they they're willing to say, hey, we'll pay a certain amount to to get what we want, which I think you could get a day two pick for Garrett Bowles. He's played that well. It tackles in the NFL nowadays, they're really aging well. I think Garrett Bowles played well enough to warrant being one of those more valuable assets the Broncos have. If the Broncos would just outright cut Garrett Bowles, I would be absolutely shocked by that, Cody. I think they would much rather pay a portion of his deal, get a draft pick. But like you said, you can add 16 million. You can almost get rid of that entire deficit against the salary cap by moving Garrett Bowles this year. No more guaranteed money. We've talked about in the past that like Garrett, he's he's declined opportunities to restructure his deal in the past. So it doesn't feel like he's really on board with the idea of taking the proverbial haircut to stay in Denver as much as he would like to stay there. I think he deserves to be paid appropriately. And, and that's going to lead to 2025 free agency for him. Maybe if he does get traded an extension from that team. So I think a trade is most likely with Garrett Bowles, Cody. And I don't, as of right now, of course, right now is kind of the doom and gloom. The Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. The Broncos, you know, they're resetting, like, let's just blow this whole thing up. I think Garrett Bowles is a likely trade candidate based on the Broncos' lack of draft capital and the possibility that you could get a potential day two pick out of some team. Yeah, and, and I think you make a great point because I think the main concern people would have is like which team would want to trade for a guy that they don't have a guarantee of maybe even ha bring it back the next year. You mentioned, I think, the, the price point of, okay, well, if Denver agrees to pay a certain amount, that team will be there. But maybe it's the same exact kind of contract discussion that you know those two teams have. Like in a trade, like Garrett's like, I will only be traded to this team if, in fact, there was an extension on the table with it similar to what happened with Bradley Chubb and the Miami Dolphins. That's what let that trade go through here for both sides between Denver and Miami just a couple years ago. So very interesting point to be made there. Look, we talked about Garrett Bowles. It's obviously one tackle option here. Uh, but there's also a Broncos wide receiver who's set to make quite a bit of money here in 2024. Could an extension or a restructure potentially be heading towards one of the Broncos' top offensive playmakers. We'll dive deeper into that here on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. Today's Locked On Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Once again, if you sign up as a brand new customer over there at FanDuel Sportsbook, you can get $150 in bonus bets if you place a $5 bet and it wins. You can bet all on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more if you somehow bet on the All-Star game from this past weekend. If you didn't take the over, I don't know what you were thinking. Obviously, the highest scoring game in NBA All-Star history. Always hard to kind of get in on that action, though, when you don't know if guys are going to miss. Guys are shooting from half court, nailing three after three after three. But now the second half of the NBA season is here where everybody's making a push in the playoffs. We all know the Western Conference is the strongest conference in the NBA. There's going to be a big time race for seeds one through eight here in the second half stretch. And FanDuel is the perfect place to get in on the action. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Once again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. 
offensively for the Denver Broncos. There's some major contract situations coming up here as we approach just under a month to NFL free agency. Could we see Cortland Sutton, Mike McGlinchey, other big name players counting a huge portion against this year's salary cap? Could we see them maybe redo their deals? Cody and I are going to talk about that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. But I want to say thank you and give a shout out to every single one of you everyday listeners out there that make us part of your day however you choose to do so. Free and available everywhere that you listen to podcasts as well as you can watch the show on YouTube. And we appreciate you for making us part of your day, whether it's on your commute, whether you're at the grocery store, on the treadmill, whatever you're doing, however you're listening. And we appreciate you for rocking with us right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's talk about Mike McGlinchey, Cody, because we talked about Garrett Bowles. Obviously, McGlinchey got the big five-year deal last year in free agency. And you, you had to think the Broncos knew when they were entering into that first wave of 2023 free agency that they structured deals in order to be able to give themselves some salary cap flexibility the next two off seasons. So meaning 2024, 2025. And Mike McGlinchey getting the only five-year deal in free agency last year, I think is significant in that particular regard. So we, we've seen reports, rumors that McGlinchey could potentially do a little restructure of his contract or convert some money to a bonus. I think that's a really easy way for the Broncos to free up some cap space. Well, and on top of that as well, look, you mentioned the, the big-time contract. When you look at where Denver's at, we talked about Russell Wilson the first segment. Obviously has the most expensive contract on the Broncos. Number two, it's Mike McGlinchey, right? And so when you look at that, I think there's some frustration in the eyes of Broncos country because, yes, you pay him a lot of money. Did he perform up to that contract last year? I'd say no, he didn't, right? But I think that there's room to grow, right? First year in a brand new offensive scheme. Look, he was in Kyle Shanahan's offense for a long, long time. Denver's offense was not like that. There were areas where I felt like McGlinchey was good. I felt like in run blocking, McGlinchey was great. He needs to be better in pass protection. I think we can all acknowledge that. But I think that there is some leverage here by the Broncos. And as you mentioned, like Richard Tato, George Payton, the way that when they negotiated these deals, it gives them options. And look, even I think what is it after not this upcoming season, but after next season, this not this not 2024, but after 2025, if it's not working out, Denver can cut, I think, the court at a relatively easy cost where it's not going to be a detriment to them. There is that. And I think that's how you're going to see a lot of these deals negotiated going forward by many NFL teams. Like, okay, hey, we're going to have a two to three year window and it's going to be expensive. But if it doesn't work out, we're not going to be on the hook for it after year three of this deal. So there is that. Um, I believe it's $17.5 million will be guaranteed on March 18th. As Mike Klish reported, he is one of those guys that will likely be a, a candidate to have a converted, uh, you know, a salary converted into a signing bonus, which does free up cap space. We've seen Denver do that the last couple of years. They did it, if I'm not mistaken, with Cortland Sutton. They did it with Tim Patrick a little bit the last couple of seasons just to be able to free up some space there. It's little bits of maneuverability that give them flexibility to make other decisions. But it is hard when you are over the cap, right? You want to have flexibility. And I, I can't remember, Sarah, the last time the Broncos have been in a position where they've been over the cap. They've usually have always had cap space. They've had the rollover. They've usually entered free agency with – 36 37 million dollars to work with this is going to be a different i think experience for us covering this team in terms of seeing how they maneuver it this does feel very much like the new orleans saints with sean payton every year they're over the cap and then they somehow find a way to create space like they've been really good at being able to do that how will the broncos do that to me that's a great question here 18.5 million dollar cap hit for mcglinchy here in 2024 obviously maneuvering in there but then that leads us to a conversation here about one of Denver's top playmakers on the offensive side of the ball, Cortland Sutton, obviously a name for him, 10 touchdowns this past season. A lot of the conversation is, okay, well, hey, his trade value is the highest it'll probably ever be coming off of a 10-touchdown year. We've talked about, hey, like there is a strong possibility that they're, between Jerry, Judy, Cortland Sutton, one of these two guys, somebody is not going to be back. And I feel like if the Broncos maneuver Cortland's contract a little bit, there is a chance that he'll be back. As it says, $2 million of his $13 million salary for 2024 becomes guaranteed on March 18th. That doesn't seem pretty bad, like $2 million of that. But Mike Kliss also reported that $13 million salary can be converted into a signing bonus for cap space, which obviously makes things a little bit more flexible for Denver. Cortland has the fifth most expensive contract right now on the Broncos roster. We also talk about Tim Patrick, also another restructure candidate, potential extension candidate as well. Same thing is on the table here for Court. Yeah, Cortland Sutton is one of those guys that 
we talked about maybe his trade value being at its highest right now. And, and he has two years left on that deal, which does give you the flexibility to be able to restructure. And for those that are wondering like, well, how much cap space would that really save the Denver Broncos? I mean, it would really, it would depend on how they structure the bonus, right? So mm -hmm. we can't sit here and say, well, it would save the Broncos 13 million because they're paying them 13 million in a signing bonus. It would really, it would really depend on how they split that up, how they spread it out. And and yeah. look, that's above Cody and I's pay grade. We're not Rich Hurtado. So if the Broncos no. want to hire us to be, we'll do the research. But look, I, it, it ultimately, it's one way out of a variety for this Broncos team to have flexibility. I think one common misconception among maybe listeners or people who respond on Twitter to every free agent idea with the Broncos don't have any cap space. They can't sign this guy that they could sign pretty much anybody that they would want to within reason everybody and the reason for that is, is because you create salary cap flexibility now it takes two to tangle right you have to have a party that's willing to do the restructure to take but i mean if, if you're Cortland sutton and broncos come to you and they say hey you want you want 13 million dollars right now we're just going to spread it around i mean are you saying no to that i mean that's he's still Absolutely got two not. years left on his deal and a lot of it is not guaranteed so i mean it's just one of those things that's like the Broncos have a lot of flexibility with certain players. Portland Sutton is one of them. The interesting thing is, is that the, the Mike Kliss report came out about maybe the Broncos trying to convert some salary into a bonus. And we're like, wait a second. I thought Portland was potentially the bigger trade candidate out of both he and Jerry Judy. So, man, just buckle in for this offseason Broncos country. We have no idea what's going to happen next. But hopefully we do start getting some answers soon. Like you said, the scouting combine coming up you're going to want to be able to already be making plans for free agency with agents at the scouting combine. So don't mm -hmm. be surprised if the Broncos have a lot of these things kind of already done or in the works or like verbally agreed to. And we start hearing about them in the near future. Well, and, and you mentioned the, the key frame there, like this is where those conversations happen. Like all the agents are going to be in Indianapolis because they're looking at potential prospects or they're looking at their clients who are competing and showcasing what they're doing at the combine. And so GMs, head coaches, well, I don't think head coaches can have those conversations, but GMs will have the conversation with the agents about what's going on. And then the GM will kind of serve as that third party between the head coach and obviously an agent. We always hear about the legal tampering period. There's a lot like I think it's all illegal during this portion right now for any of those talks. To happen. We all know off the record conversations happen in, during the time where you're not supposed to be having these conversations. So we'll see where Denver's at. We will get clarity in the next two weeks, though, two and a half weeks, Broncos country. And I promise you one thing, we'll break it all down here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. So save your questions because we're also going to have some episodes coming up where you have a chance to get your questions answered here on the show. And you get to be a big part of what we do going forward. You already are. We have a bigger chance to be involved with the show going forward here. But Sarah, as we get a little bit closer to the NFL scout and combine, there's the initial preliminary projections, draft boards that have rankings of where players are listed at. A lot of big names, Dane Brugler, one of the most reliable guys, obviously will fill out their draft boards, but the combine and performances will make that list change a little bit in the next couple of weeks here. But the latest locked on NFL mock draft has the Broncos taking a quarterback at 12. Who is the guy that they roll with? Well, we'll dive deeper to that here on today's episode. Locked on Broncos. Today's Locked on Broncos is brought to you by our friends over there at the Game Time app. And you shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and the easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, the music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With Zone Deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for big-time savings. And the Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. And if you find the tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Locked On Broncos, we'll dive deep into the latest Locked On NFL mock draft that has the Broncos taking a quarterback 
Real quick, we just want to say thank you so much once again to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Even though that the offseason is here, we are your daily go-to for all the Broncos objective coverage that you need, looking at every side of the coin, looking at every angle for how this team can build a roster that can compete or some of the changes that might be coming their way. Lockdown Broncos on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So subscribe or follow down below so you never miss out on any episode that we bring your way throughout the entire offseason. Sarah, we're a little bit of a ways away out before we start doing a real in-depth mock draft Monday, right? Until we get through the second wave of NFL free agency, we're going to feature mock drafts on Mondays from other outlets, also in-house from the Lockdown Podcast Network. Before we get into that, what Broncos fans can look forward to is after that second wave of free agency, when we get into mock draft Mondays, Sarah's going to do a mock. I'm going to do a mock, and we're going to choose mocks that you send in as well to break down on the show. So if you have that as well, you can already get in the practice of sending us your Monday mock drafts. We'll love to read them and check them out on social media. But the latest locked on NFL mock draft has the Broncos taking a quarterback. And obviously, I think that's really a big discussion here on Twitter. I think a large portion of Broncos country, Sarah, just from my observation, wants the Broncos to take a QB in the draft, whether that's at 12, whether that is moving up to do so. I think the common consensus is there, but the latest locked on NFL mock draft has the Broncos taking Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. I feel like there's mixed opinions on J.J. in this year's NFL draft. What, what did you think about this pick here from the locked on NFL mock draft and where Denver has him taking? I think he's an intriguing prospect, especially when you talk about maybe pairing him with Sean Payton. You know, one of the youngest quarterbacks in this class, which of course is kind of it's weird in the NFL draft these days with transfer rules and and the whole COVID exception that was from a couple years ago, giving guys an extra year of eligibility. So you have a lot of older guys in this draft, like Bo Nix, Michael Penix, even Jaden Daniels, who you know they're they're already approaching their mid twenties. Then you got JJ McCarthy, who's like you know twenty one years old, just turned twenty one. So there's a there's a huge discrepancy there, but how much does that really matter to NFL teams at this point, right? I mean, that that used to be a big deal, but now you see the longevity of the position a, a little bit more. And so you're, I guess you're not necessarily banking on these guys being done playing by the age of 32, 33 years old, right? So it's not as big of a deal, but I like the J.J. McCarthy pick, Cody. And, and you mentioned earlier guys like Dane Brugler. He's got J.J. in the 20s somewhere on his big board, but then you've got there's some hype out there for he could be the second QB off the board in this draft. And I just feel like JJ McCarthy, based on what we see from him on the field, the fact that he's, you know, won a lot of games at the college level, come through in the clutch on third downs. He's he's made some really big time throws. He's he's been a leader of a really good team there at Michigan, despite being one of the younger players on that team. Cody, to me, I feel like this guy is gonna blow people away in the pre-draft process. And I think that's gonna be a huge factor where we're going to see him just continually climbing up the boards. Now, as far as Broncos country, I, I, I see a lot of support going J.J. McCarthy's way at this point, right? And people like the way that he plays the game. People like the, the off-the-field makeup, the things that they've seen from him in interviews and whatnot. I could see him being a very, very popular pick if the Broncos are able to get him, especially at 12. But even if they move up to get him, I know there's risk involved in that. I feel like J.J. McCarthy would have a huge approval rating from Broncos country if indeed they do go that direction. And I just always want to preface this. We're a long ways out, but Broncos country, if Denver goes to the rookie quarterback, please give the young guy time, right? Let him make mistakes. He's going to make mistakes. Just because if he struggles or is bad his first year, he's not a bust. Let there be a developmental process that plays out. I feel like we have to put that early disclaimer on this because I understand how the expectations are. And sometimes I feel like for young guys, they're very unfair. Like you're not going to run into the CJ Strouds of the world very often. And to expect that from a guy, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. So I want to preface by saying that some other quarterbacks that were available in this mock draft, uh, you know, at the time that, you know, when Denver was on the clock at 12, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., uh, Jaden Daniels had went eighth overall to the Atlanta Falcons. So he wasn't an option on the table here. I'm very curious though. Like I, I'm not opposed to the J.J. McCarthy pick here. I've been going through and been watching some film breakdowns that people have put together there. But I think the the concern, like there's different analysis-based thoughts out there about a player like J.J. McCarthy, right? You've seen some guys say, oh, I feel like he, he should have went back to Michigan for another year. One more year of, of playing would have done really well for him. Maybe if Harbaugh didn't take the job in L.A., maybe he would have stayed another year. Possibly, I'm not sure. Um, but then also at the same time, you see criticisms about, okay, well, hey, 
He's a guy that doesn't have a very good, consistent deep ball placement here. Dude, does Denver need that, though? Like, Denver's going to have to take some shots downfield, but does Denver need to be able to attack the intermediate to the short stuff a little bit more effectively than they have been the last couple of years? I'm very interested to see where the payoff and where kind of the difference is there. So, But, but that doesn't mean that J.J. can't work on these things, though. If Denver takes him, there's plenty of time for him to get into a system and to work on these areas. You build an offensive structure on what he's good at, and then you work on the things, and you have you surround him with playmakers. Look, Marvin Mims is a great guy to have, in my opinion. If you want to try to help him get better on his deep ball, throw it to Marvin Mims downfield. I think J.J. will do that. So I like the pick here, and obviously there's going to be a lot of different quarterbacks that probably get picked by all these mock drafts in the coming days and weeks here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We'll obviously look at some of the NFLs. We'll look at Daniel Jeremiah's. We'll look at Dane Brugler's latest mock drafts. We'll get into all that, and we'll also do our own mock drafts here going forward. But J.J. is an interesting pick here, and it would be interesting, right? Okay, let's say Denver does take him. Well, now you have Harbaugh in the division. Who knows everything about him? Is that something that would be a little bit of a concern for you, Sarah, just from a standpoint like, okay, hey, Harbaugh recruited this guy. He knows what he's good at. He knows what he's not good at. How would that impact maybe a game plan overall here for Sean Payton and also for Harbaugh on the other side of it? I kind of think that would be really fun to see, honestly. I mean, I, I don't know that necessarily would be a negative for the Broncos. Look, no. this is the guy that Jim Harbaugh believed could lead him to a national championship so much so that, man, remember a year ago, we were talking about him basically turning the Broncos offer down and would have been a historic offer probably at the time. We don't know exactly how much they were offering or if they made it a formal offer. But, hey, he went back to Michigan believing that this guy could help his team win a national championship. And so you have to think, and I know Harbaugh has said this, but it's his guy. He said he's the best QB in this draft. And and so I think that, you know, he loves the guy. I think you buy somebody's potential like that. Harbaugh hasn't had a ton of guys translate to the NFL, which to me is very, very weird, Cody. I mean, we have we talk a lot about Andrew Luck back in the day. That was the prized possession, you know, from from Stanford and Jim Harbaugh developing him. But in between that, in the time at Michigan, like how many quarterbacks from Michigan made it in the NFL under Jim Harbaugh? So kind of an interesting thing there. So I feel like JJ going to the Broncos would be so much fun. They stick it to Jim Harbaugh a little bit. Show him how you could develop his guy at the NFL level and beat him twice a year with the guy that he recruited. That would be a great storyline. And I would love to see that. I think Jim Harbaugh would be rooting for the guy. And of course you would think, well, yeah, maybe he could exploit some of his weaknesses here and there a little bit, but maybe like you said, JJ could get better at some things and he could maybe start to exploit Jim Harbaugh. He's like, I know how Jim runs a team on the other side, yeah. you know? So you never know how it could be advantageous for you going the other way. Well, you know, the future is now, old man. That's what I hope to see. Like if JJ <laughs> was the quarterback, I expect that to be made into a meme if the Broncos beat the Chargers with JJ. We need to have somebody put that in, some, in their memory bank somewhere here. But Broncos country, let us know what you thought about the latest Locked On NFL mock draft. Do you agree with their decision to have the Broncos take J.J. McCarthy at 12th overall? Let us know in the YouTube comments down below. If you're on social media, if you're listening wherever you get your podcasts, let us know at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Locked On Broncos. But for all you everyday listeners out there, here's what we can expect to dive deep in, into on tomorrow's episode Locked on Broncos. There was a poll run by NFL.com, and they had the Broncos 2023 rookie draft class ranked dead last. We'll talk about whether or not there's something we should invest in that analysis or even that ranking there and how Denver can take steps forward with the rookie class or the second-year guys going forward here. You're going to break all that down on tomorrow's brand-new episode, Locked on Broncos.